There are lots of different generations of work. Does it make a difference? You know, there are lots of different ways to divide up the people that work around you. Uh, sometimes you can do it based on their culture, you can do it on their work style, you can even do it on the country of origin. Many, many different ways and you probably all have the ones you like. According to a great presentation and book I read recently, there's another one. It's about the generation they were born in. The book was called Unlocking Generational Codes by Anna Liotta. This time we look at the generations, the codes, and why they matter. Okay, number one, the generations. The book outlines six generations, periods of time people were brought in, but they're not all going to be in your workplace. First, born between 1900 and 1926 are the GI generation. Born between 27 and 45 are the traditionalists. If you were born between 1946 and 1963, you're a baby boomer. Born between 64 and 79, a Generation X. If you were born between 1980 and 99, a millennial or a Gen Y. And finally, if you are born after 2000, you're a next up. By the way, the speaker notes have all of those detailed in. Each generation is different, and the book guides you to what some of those things are. Think about the experiences. It was World War II for some, Korea for others, post 9-11, whatever it was, Liotta argues that these events uh, form and mold the era. For the moment, let's assume that she's right, and that's true, and you should read the book to really get the whole story. The point here is that generations think differently, and you need to understand how. By the way, if you're born on the cusp of two generations, you may be a bit of each, or you may be one or the other. Okay, number two, what are the codes? A well, codes here is a mnemonic for the framework we use to make decisions. It stands for communication, orientation, discipline, environment, and, to, and success. To understand a generation, you need to combine these. And it's important to understand there are no right or wrong approaches here, just different ones. Let's think of an example to make the point about how people make decisions. The traditionalist generation tend to look for historical facts and experiences. They like to repeat what's worked before and think it through. The boomers, who are the first of the MBA generation, will want analysis. They like to see data. They like to respect the process of getting that data. They like to be part of analyzing it. Gen Xers, well, look, they're a bit more impatient. They think all this analysis is overrated. They want to quickly get to a solution that's clear and concise and get on with it. Finally, the millennials want to know what the latest and greatest thing is. It's something that's probably going to be fun and something they're going to want to share with others. So why does it matter? So the answer to why this matters is actually in the subtitle of the book, which is understanding what makes the generations tick and what ticks them off. As we know, if you don't understand someone, it's almost impossible to influence them. His or her generation may be one of the ways to unlocking someone that you are struggling to communicate with. My experience is that particularly important is when you're skipping generations. The book gives great insights and how you might be able to do just that. You may think this approach uh, is silly or unnecessary or even wrong, but if you want to influence someone, you often have to understand how they think, and generations may be a way to do that.